So GoPros out of the box have a problem, and that problem is that they make your footage look terribly slow. Now, if you've ever watched a cycling-related video on YouTube, you've probably run across creators like Safa Bryan or others whose footage looks like this. I bet you're wondering why their footage looks so fast, and no matter how fast you go, your footage just doesn't look the same. What's going on everyone? My name is Dalton, I ride and race bikes, and today on the channel we are breaking down the settings and gear needed to take your footage from this... ...to this. First thing I want to talk about today is actual speed. Sub 35 mile an hour footage is just not going to look fast, period. Yes, you can take into account all the things that I'm about to talk about and it will look better and much more cinematic, but will it look blisteringly fast? No. The reason some footage looks absolutely bonkers is because the speed that you're traveling at is absolutely bonkers. For background, in cinematography, there's this thing called the 180 rule. This is the idea that the frame rate, 24, 30, 60, 120 frames per second, should be one half or 180 degree differential from your shutter speed. So that means 24 frames per second needs to be shot at 1 48th of a second shutter speed. Why, you might ask? The answer is simple, sort of. Natural motion blur. This is what makes your footage look fast. The environment around you needs to be blurred in the video. This is because in real life, what you see is actually closest to 24 frames per second, 1 48th of a second shutter speed. That allows your peripherals to basically have the entire environment rushing by and we seek to mimic this in footage. If you shoot with too high of a shutter speed, absolutely nothing in the frame is blurred. While this is really cool for detail in the shot, it doesn't do a lot for speed. Okay, so now I've got you thinking cool, 1 48th of a second shutter speed all the time, 24 frames per second, but it's not that simple. There is another issue that we do need to address to improve your footage just that much more. That issue is exposure. Since shutter speed is a measure of how quickly the shutter on your camera is opening and closing, or basically how many times per second the shutter acts, it's directly related to how much light is allowed in to hit the sensor on your camera. The slower the shutter speed, the brighter or more exposed the image becomes. So a 1 48th of a second shutter speed in bright sunlight can actually result in extremely overexposed and unusable footage. Don't freak out just yet though, there is a solution to this problem and it's called an ND filter. An ND filter or neutral density filter is most commonly referred to as sunglasses for your camera. Most cinema cameras that you see in the wild with the big lenses and all that stuff allow you to just take a ND filter and screw it onto the end of the lens. Absolutely no problem, it's super simple. With the older generation GoPros, ND filters were not an easy task. You had to come up with some weird magnetic solution and the options for the GoPro Hero 7 and the GoPro Hero 8 just weren't that abundant. Luckily, the new generation of GoPros, the Hero 9, the Hero 10, and I'm sure all future generations have a removable lens on them to allow you to get a little more pro and use ND filters that are integrated with the actual camera body like you see here. I personally use these Freewell ND filters. They have awesome reviews. I personally think they do a great job. They fit very snugly on the GoPro Hero 9 so far, and I would imagine they would do the same on the 10. I will link them in the description if you want to pick some up, but realistically, you guys can use any Amazon option out there or any other brand you want to. They don't have to be Freewell. You're probably thinking by now, okay, settings are dialed, ND filters purchased, I'm good to go. Not quite yet. The problem with the 180 rule and ND filters is that GoPro performs pretty terribly in low light. So GoPro's response when you set the shutter rate to 1 48th of a second is basically to crank the ISO because it thinks it's in a low light situation. If you've ever shot GoPro in low light, you would probably already know that the hyper smooth breaks down miserably and it's basically unusable footage 
once again. Here's an example of the absolutely jarring footage you're gonna get if you only use the settings I'm talking about with ND filters. So how do we fix this? Unfortunately, the solution is yet another piece of equipment. Most of you have already seen these fancy gimbals like this that allow you to balance the camera perfectly and then use the actual motor of the gimbal to balance the shot, balance the camera, and make that footage look butter smooth. Chances are, if you've seen behind the scenes footage or anything like that, you've seen one of these more robust gimbals being used to balance larger cinema cameras. So how do you take a large scale gimbal like that break it down and package it to support something like a GoPro. Luckily, Feutech has a solution with this WG2X wearable gimbal. Now this thing is built specifically for GoPro and it comes with a GoPro to quarter 20 adapter. I've mounted it both on my chest and then also on my noggin. This thing is super easy to balance. You really only need to balance it in one direction. To get the absolute best, most cinematic looking shot that you're gonna get, you need all three of these things. You need the proper settings, you need an ND filter, and then you need a wearable gimbal that can stabilize that footage while you're shooting it. I totally understand not all of you are gonna fancy wearing all of this crap all over your body, and I get it. So, What's the next best option? Let's back up to the settings really quickly. Take that shutter speed and instead of 1 48th of a second, take the settings back to auto in the GoPro settings. Then swap out the standard GoPro lens for the correct ND filter based on the level of light that you're seeing outside. If it's golden hour, it's a little bit more low light, you will need less of a neutral density filter. So target that eight or 16. If you're in full light, Go for the 32, that's fine. I would say 16 is probably a sweet spot, so that way when you get in the shadows, you're not gonna run into that weird grainy look. Now this should get you pretty close to that realistic motion blur that we're looking for. It won't be quite as good as the cinematic stuff, but it should be a happy medium, and it won't force you to deal with the hassle of carting around a gimbal, and it's especially important for the longer rides when you maybe don't really have space to carry around a gimbal on the bike. I do recommend if you're chasing that super cinematic, high quality, fast shot, just invest in the right gear up front to get the job done. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, wherever you're putting these videos is going to reward you for the higher quality footage. So, now you've got the ultimate setup for filming descents and filming fast rides. Does that suddenly mean that you need to become a carbon copy of people like Safa? No. I wanted to create this video to help you improve the overall quality of the unique videos that you want to make. On this channel, I aim to mix it up. You'll get your fair share of race footage, descent footage, super scenic cycling routes, but mostly I aim to share my unique experiences on the bike with all of you. Wherever that takes me is wherever this channel will go. If you want to see where that's been taking me lately, maybe check out this recent vlog right here. And if you've already seen that one, Maybe stick around, check out this video instead. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you again soon.